in Cork. We had planned to video our arrival, <laughs> but um, I had to come in backwards uh, because I fended up on the starboard side, uh, expecting to be on the outside of the pontoon. Um, but that was uh, quite occupied. Already, one boat was already left. So uh, it does look like there is a gap, but uh, it wasn't there when I came in. Um, but uh, we are absolutely roasting and um, I definitely think it's going to be a day for the canopy. Definitely. Hello, I'm back. Enjoying the sunshine. Yeah, and we're doing something strange on Salty Lass. We're walking. <laughs> yes, we've walked from Crosshaven down to the beach and the, what's this beach called? This is uh, Church Bay. Church Bay, which is beautiful. And uh, we're watching right a few. Along, and we're going to climb up that hill, aren't we, Dana? Oh, yeah. We're right round to Crosshaven again. Yeah. He is hoping. <laughs> Haven. We've been here a few days enjoying ourselves and we're trying to depart but <laughs> the wind gods aren't playing with us. We've got extremely strong winds, um, six gusting seven and the boat, um, when we changed the ropes earlier the, the bow just ran with the wind so we're a bit stuck. Oh Karen's coming up. Come on Karen. Thank you. Apparently she had to put her lippy on to look her best. Oh yeah. <laughs> Girl needs her lippy on. <laughs> So I think me and Bev are uh, forgetting the things like lippy. <laughs> oh god, that ran out that ran out years ago, that did. You've got to keep your femininity going, girl. Yeah, yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> so um we had I've got my <laughs> We had we had hope to leave and go to an anchor. Shish, we had hope to leave and go to an anchorage, but the wind discovered our plans, so we're probably gonna to go to a different anchorage. But that's the way it is. So, so what we done, Val, uh, the wind's been um Playing a bit merry havoc, Karen. A girl? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. We've done a nice walk around the coast. It was um, a coast walk on the was it a cliff walk? Don't forget the camera's there. The camera's Hello. there. And um, was it a cliff walk? It was a more coastal yeah. walk, wasn't it? Wasn't yeah, it? it was a cliff walk. Yeah. Uh, so we've done that. And we did a, the railway path going all the way down to that little village, which was the village walk. I have no idea, Karen. But it was supposed to be three and a half kilometres, but when we it, it was more like a six it mile. Was ten, it was ten kilometres. Yeah, so it was yeah. like a six mile walk. Yeah. Um, when we went on the walk by the river, I went past, uh, we went past Drake's Pool, which is marked on the charts as an anchorage. <laughs> uh, it is so stuffed now with mooring balls that you can't really anchor there. Unless you're anchoring a rubber duck. Yeah. And the same can be said of the anchorages before you get to Drake's Pool. They've got, you've got the three marinas and then it's mooring balls, mooring balls, mooring balls. And one other little point about the mooring balls is we, we did look into moving the boat to a mooring ball, but we've been told that we're too large a boat and from looking at the boats behind us, a lot of them seem to be around 30 feet maximum. So that seems to be the limit for the mooring balls. So if you're a larger boat, you're not going to be on the mooring balls. Anything, certainly in the mid 30s. Yeah, you do need to be in the marina here. Um, and like I say, the anchorages are just too stuffed with mooring balls. Don't even dry yeah. them. The local town's got a decent shop, um, so you know it's it's like a like a local convenience store. So you'll pay local convenience store prices. Don't forget about the chippy. What's it called? It's not Chish and Fips. Yeah, Chish and Fips. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, don't forget about the chippy. And because um, yeah, it's fair enough. Although I didn't 
prices did go up 50 cents between the first time I bought chips there and the second time I bought chips there. And then <laughs> we went from 3.50 to 4 euros. Whether that's just food inflation or just the summer season, I've got no idea. Uh, this is expensive, like a fruit loaf in Aldi at home, maybe £1.20. It's 3.99 here. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Is, I don't know how people live. So, um, just be aware that Ireland is a little bit dearer, but we are in the sticks here. Uh, whereas um, the Aldi in Cork was cheaper. Had so, better prices, yes. Definitely. So, um, we will be stocking up there. We'll stock up an Aldi before we go off around the coast. Um, we're hoping that this easterly wind moderates a little bit so that in a couple of days' time we can pop out, head for Oyster Haven Conceal, and then round the old head. And just see and what it, we're doing because and, honestly and, it, and it's featured rips and tights but at this rate any plans that we have are we're going to just make up as we go along i think the plans have to be done daily what do you think Karen? definitely at Monkstown Anchorage. Um, we've got two and a half metres under the keel, we're anchored in mud, we've another 30 centimetres of tide to drop on our helmer today. Yes, it's very enjoyable, <laughs> I haven't sailed Ooh, since, oh, I, I didn't since about three, four days ago. Yeah, but before that it's got... Coming! Since last September! Oh, right, sorry Karen, you talk away. Okay, uh, yeah, it's been good. Um, we were using the Noah really like a spinnaker because we have the wind behind us. Um, Excuse me while I yank the crew. Right, I'll give this arm. We had to swap it from side to side. Yeah, um, we, we, we did some we did some close haul stuff with uh, three reefs in the main, two in the jenny because it was 30 knots of wind. And I think you did absolutely fine. Yep. Actually, the rougher the better. <laughs> For me, I like it. She likes it rough. <laughs> And then yeah. it was a downwind run under Genoa, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. as soon as we took the main down, the Genoa just filled, didn't it? The Genoa just filled, yeah. and it was a really easy run down, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Well, we've done all that. It's time for Kerry. What do you Curry. think? Hey! <laughs>
if you ever do come into uh, Cork and come onto the uh, pontoon at Cork, then uh, be prepared to have some rather bigger boats than you'd be normally expecting berthing up right next to you. Uh, we were wondering if it was going to come to this pontoon. No, we were being a bit daft. That's only because we were being, we were relaxing and enjoying ourselves. We feel like we're being bits of tourists, but tomorrow I'm going to be the ultimate tourist. <laughs> I can't wait. I just tied it up there, that's not sorry. Hey, go on, off you go. <laughs> Your moment of glory. <laughs> Is it this one here? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, do the right keep one. Your hands up. No, keep yeah. your hands there. Okay. And is this grey yeah, one at the bottom? Me, yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, okay. I did it. Hey! <laughs> Oh my goodness! Come on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So quick in the moment. Oh. <laughs> Honest to goodness. What a dafty. But what the hell. That's me for you. Well, I'm here at uh, Blarney Castle because I need the gift of the gab. If uh, I can't get the gift of the gab, uh, some of our viewers are hoping that I stop mangling uh, Irish pronunciation <laughs> as I um, gaily uh, say things wrong. I don't think this will help you with that. No, I don't think it will, but... What exactly did you have to do? Oh, I had to hang upside down and uh, kiss the Blarney Stone, which I did. I kissed it. And where is it? It's at the top of the castle, right at the top, and it's that stone that's right at the bottom of the uh, overhang. So um, my bum was just about holding on as I kissed the stone. But uh, yeah, totally daft, but there you go. Well, oh, our visit to Cork has ended in something of a disaster. Um, the booking system for Cork City Marina is very, very simple. This is a static web page. You fill in a form and then um, there's a thing that takes your payment. And a couple of minutes or an hour later, you get an email saying, thank you for that, you're, you're booked in. Uh, birth number such and such. But when you come to the marina, there's no numbers on the pontoon. You've got no idea where you're supposed to be. Um, it turns out the people running the Cork City Marina are not the people who have run it for quite some years. One of the things that happens every year, and it's happened since 2005 apparently, so we're getting on 15, 16 odd years, is a big race from Cork, uh, I think from Crosshaven or Monkstown, somewhere like that, all the way up to here. And basically for that week, or that, that weekend, the marina is shut. So we came up with a booking for the weekend the marina was shut because it's a simple web page, it's got no brains, it just takes money, that's all it does. It's got no concept of calendars or other events or what bookings are in. Um, if 44 boats booked a, a space here, it probably would take all 44 bookings, there's room for six. <laughs> so there's a bit of work needs done. Uh, I'm a little narked because we were put off the pontoon. Now, we've had the two nights that we paid for. We were leaving this evening on the tide at six o'clock. It's now your early afternoon with another four or five hours to wait. Um, but we had to put Karen off the boat early. She was in town having a lunch somewhere. Gaynor had left laundry in a laundrette somewhere up there. I was out doing shopping. Um, all getting ready for a six o'clock departure to be told, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to move the boat. There's a big event on and you should never have been able to book it. 
well, that's not really my problem. Um, I booked it in good faith and I've done my best. Um, I don't know if I'm going to f contact Cork Harbour people who run it and say I want my money back, because to be fair I did have my two nights. But at the same time it hasn't been a very satisfactory ending. So if you are coming here just be aware that the booking system is a bit primitive and it definitely has its drawbacks and today we're experiencing probably what will be the major drawback of the year. Um, I have no idea if there are other events organised here. I just don't know. The website didn't say. Um, I hope they correct it. I hope they pay some money and get a decent booking system that is aware of other river events and things like that so this sort of thing doesn't happen because it's a pain in the ass. Karen's wandering around the city with all her luggage because she's got another few hours to go before she has to go to the airport. Um, we're stuck in a harbour wall. Uh, another little boat is mirrored up next to us. And um, because I'm not, I think maybe they're not too sure about how to mirror on harbour walls. So they've asked a raft. And they're only a very small boat, very light, so we don't mind. <sighs> but it doesn't quite put the right kind of finish on what has been a very enjoyable week. So. <sighs> One of them things, I guess. Just be aware. It can happen. So the plan now is to wait to 6 o'clock, another 4 or 5 hours, like I said. Um, when the tide is going out, we will run down to Monkstown, we will drop the anchor there, and we will put the boats correct, because the boat below decks is a shambles. I mean, there is just shopping just hurled in there, because I didn't have time to put it away. Gainer's going to get the laundry. When she comes back, she will hurl the laundry below decks. Uh, if she's time to put it away and we're trying to put the boats right, we'll use the next hour or two to do it. But, um, yeah. Oh, one other thing. This is the second piece of wall that we attach to. The first one down there, about 100 metres behind us. Um, we did our usual thing, tied a riser around the ladder, and the ladder came out of the wall. And thankfully there was a couple of bolts still on the top, which meant the ladder didn't fall into the water. But it gives a heck of a shock. This one is far more firmly affixed, but... Um, <laughs> after being evicted from the marina <laughs> that was a surprise I could have done without Hi Karen, how was your holiday? Brill! Did plenty of walking in Crosshaven uh, a couple of walks um, we went to, was it Cove? Place? No, we went to uh, Monkstown. Monkstown and we seen a beautiful, beautiful garden which is shoved on Facebook uh, a lady invited us in, so we were able to go around. I've had a great time in Cork, uh, bought a few things in Dunn's, which is very similar to Marks and Spencer's. And the food has been great on board. Beverly has really cooked all sorts of lovely food. So I've only eaten out today in um, Cork and I had fish stew, which was very nice. So yeah, I've had a great time. I'm sailing. Um, bit of a rough patch one day but you know I enjoyed it the rougher the better um, and we did um, motoring so up and down basically is it the Cork River is it called a different uh, yeah so <laughs> we couldn't go out into the into the um, sea because it was just too rough it was white caps and it was like force eight force nine was it yeah something like that. so yeah I'm, sadly I've got to go home now and work and do so I'm just off to the airport.